But I should hit play, otherwise I'm, I'm now cheating. Um, uh, there we go. Is something that um, I uh, want to talk about is that what I'm calling the 21st century plenipotentiary curator. Um, and it's uh, something, the idea of the curator as a, a plenipotentiary, um, is, whether from the artist, the museum, or the institution, and um, sort of the, an entire cultural class. And it's a kind of priestly role, or a quasi-priestly role, which if you know me, you know that I'm always trying to challenge and trying to disrupt. Um, there's uh, a lot of stuff that hasn't moved on yet, it's more than 15 seconds. <laughs> There we go. So maybe that'll do it. I don't know. So a lot of things I talk about. Um, I talk about uh, museums, and, and this is the stuff that gets me up in the morning. Um, partly because it's my job, uh, and I, I don't want to get sacked. Um, and partly because it's also how I choose to spend my time. Um, because I like thinking about power, and it brings me to the question, what is power? Well, like Cersei Lannister says, for the only people who watch Game of Thrones, power is power. And what we see here is kind of an overly simplistic approach where we see He-Man being imbued by power, and we know he's getting power. And these are my two favorite dead white guys who talk a lot about power. Um, and these guys really think a lot about the relationship between culture and power, and I think that they make some really good points. Um, I was looking to try to feel like if they had a conversation, what it would look like, and this is basically what it would look like. Don't try to read it, but really what they're saying is that power is everything, and it's everywhere, and it's in everything, and it has an intent, and that intent is survival. And it's a bit like that really awful line they made Jeff Goldblum say in Jurassic Park, where you know life finds a way, and we're all supposed to um, pause and think deeply about that. Um, but really, what, uh, what culture and which culture is intent in surviving and, and imbuing itself in all of our lives is the word, this word hegemony. And so um, what does hegemony mean uh, and, and how is it that culture and hegemony and the idea of a, a plenipotentiary person uh, engages with that? Well, I'm going to try to explain hegemony using a single image, which is this one. This should terrify all of you. This is the convergence of Pinterest uh, and Marxist. Uh, Marxist ideology, which is obviously terrifying, but really explains hegemony perfectly. There's a pin board which exists to do this. Another thing which is terrifying is a deep fried Mars bar. Um, and these two things are part of our culture. They're part of our identity, or well, neither of these things really should exist. Um, and I'll kind of leave that there while we contemplate our mortality and Scotland's cholesterol level. Um, and let's look now at the word curator. So a, a brief history of the word curator, it's very old, um, It's a, and like most things, it kind of retains a bit of its ancient mustiness. Um, it comes from uh, the, the ancient Rome, and we have this idea here of a curator being anointed. Um, he's laying there, and God is kind of coming down and saying, yes, you are the one. Um, if one's being pretentious, you could say that a curator acts as a plenipotentiary of an artistic or intellectual community, but what it is is very exclusive. And it's often argued that this quasi-priestly role is getting in the way of the relationship between the public and, and the art. And a lot of artists are getting on board with this now, um, and, and have been for, for some time. Um, so in olden times, we had that other ways, in kind of newish times or new in times, depending on how you want to talk about it. We have this approach and this beautiful little piece um, by, uh, by Christoph and Manfred as part of the um, Time Guardian series is really interesting. So, so what does this look like? What does all of this new, what does the new plenipotentiary curator look like? What does this power dynamic look like? And, and I'm not trying to, to, um, to destroy the way in which uh, this works, but talking about a paradigm shift from one from an, one which is anointed to one where we can't really see what's happening, who the curators are, who the public are, who the artists are, but we know that they're all working together. It all looks a bit chaotic, but it definitely looks fun. And it's about removing the barriers between people and objects, people and art, and that's about participation. It changes the balance of power, but it doesn't diminish the value or the role of the art or the culture. And the curator then identifies relative narratives and brings people together. What we see here and what we're about to see are some images of what that might look like and how that might look in a museum context or in a, uh, 
in an artistic context. And so we see conversations, we see, uh, we see curated content, but we see people participating and we see people thinking about things. And that brings us to our, what we're doing for Limerick 2020. Uh, the participation program for that is about bringing people together with culture. It's about helping to, supporting people, empowering people, and driving that relationship. And so we are, uh, the, so the plenty potentiary isn't dead, but the, the purpose and the, the, the people who confer that authority have shifted. So thank you very much.